welcome back to Rue's Life. So today I'm going to make a video that's a little bit different. It's in no means intended to be negative, but I just wanted, you know, it's very easy for people to, to see this idyllic lifestyle when people, you know, move out, live in the country, live in a cottage, live on a small holding. And many of us watch these channels and it all looks so beautiful. And that's what many of us aspire to have. And we're very lucky. Um, and please don't get me wrong, I absolutely love living here. Um, and I am thankful and grateful every single day. However, there are many things. Um, I've been living um, country lifestyle now for many years. Um, and I've learned sometimes the hard way. There's an awful lot that people don't tell you. So what I thought I'd do today is just put a little video together. Um, it's a horrible day outside, which is kind of what sparked. I've been thinking of doing this for a while um, and I'll talk you through kind of my reasonings why I decided today was the day um, to make this video. So it, it's in no means intended to be negative or, you know, feeling sorry for myself. It's not. It's just a realistic um, video showing you the bits that you often aren't told about. So for anybody thinking of moving into the countryside, getting a small holding, a bit of land, you know, growing your own, becoming more self-sufficient, uh, living, you know, what we love to describe as living the dream or the good life, these are the bits that you might not know about. So I'm just at the back door and you can see it's a really miserable grey day. Um, it's well past nine o'clock in the morning, um, but it just isn't really getting particularly light. Um, I would have quite liked to have stayed in bed this morning, I'm not feeling very well, um, but one of the things about this lifestyle is you really don't get a day off. When you have animals and land, it's every day. You can't just say, I don't feel like it today and have a duvet day. So here's Kaylee and Kay, our greyhounds, who often make little cameo appearances. Um, they don't like the weather, they're going back in. So I've just found a, a tucked away sheltered little corner. Um, so our greyhounds, many of you may have dogs, it's not specific to country living, but I thought I'd just start with them because they're around. Um, but if you're gonna have animals, you know, you've got to get up every morning and let them out. They need exercising, they need feeding. Um, and in our case, Kay has, um, if any of you've watched her video, um, I will pop a link at the end um, to her video all about her. She has um, congestive heart failure, and so it's really important that she has a very strict regime and she has her medication morning and evening at the same time every day. And that in itself can be very restrictive. Is the heart of the home our beautiful beautiful wood burner now many people might have these as a, as a feature as an additional thing as a treat for us in this little cottage this is our only source of heat and hot water so if this isn't burning the house is cold and we don't have hot water it runs the radiators and it also provides all of our hot water and um, so it may look beautiful and we love it but the reality is you know either trying to keep it going all night, uh, constantly feeding it. So, you know, if you go out for a few hours, you've got to remember to, to bank it up. Um, or if you do let it go overnight, you know, first thing in the morning you come down, it's cold. And the first job you've got to do is start lighting that fire. And of course, alongside that is these log baskets and the coal bucket, which is just outside, need to be constantly replenished. This is a very small cottage and um, it's beautiful and cosy. But one of the downsides of it being small is there's not a huge amount of storage space. So these log baskets need filling daily. And our little kitchen here, 
Um, it really, really is tiny. Again, I love it. It's functional and we can use it. But you'll probably notice we have a washing machine. We've got a cooker. And we have a fridge, which is um, just behind that door. And then we've got the cupboard under the sink, which is full of the usual cupboard under the sink clutter. We have one cupboard and one drawer. And then two cupboards up there. And that's it. There is no room for a dishwasher and um, we wouldn't have a tumble dryer um, personally anyway, but there is no room for one. Um, so it's hand washing all the dishes. Say we've got the washing machine. That is the lot. Um, we do have a washing line and we are fortunate we, ha we have a washing line in the barn, but I'll just take you through. Um, and this is washing. Um, so a regular thing is washing, drying near to the heat source, the fire. Um, so you've often got washing, drying in the house. Again, not complaining, I'm just pointing out that it isn't always quite so picture perfect. So, staying in the theme of the fire, um, here is our coal bucket and we use a couple of IKEA bags, um, other bags and stores are available, um, to transport our logs and coal to and from the woodshed. Um, security is another issue obviously we live out in the sticks but we can't be too careful and um, so you know we can't just keep things open everything has to be locked so I'm just going to open up the, the woodshed so here we are that's the door open um, logs um, one of the advantages that I like about um, wood is you actually you know you can literally see um, what you've got um, so unlike you know sort of electric or gas or oil where um, I mean oil yes you can see what you've got because we used to have an oil tank um, but I think you know where I'm coming from we can see it we know how much it costs we fill it up um, and we can see it as it goes down and if you're budgeting it's really quite useful rather than getting unexpected bills so that is the advantage um, the disadvantages that we use um, so this is filled up to if I can try and point I've got gloves on um, sort of here um, with each load so not quite to the top um, and that lasts us during these winter months about a month so it, we're getting um, a double load every month um, and some coal and um, the coal disadvantage for me is it comes in plastic bags um, I'm yet to find a coal merchant who will just come and um, well that's not true there is a coal merchant who would come and deliver but it's having a place to put it where it's tidy and it's not just a big pile on the floor in here um, so we could get a coal bunker and we could change that but at the moment you know it does come in plastic bags which I, I don't really like um, and with the wood every month that gets delivered rain or shine um, it gets delivered just outside these gates here in a big pile just here and then of course we have to bring it in and stack it in here and as I say every day um, we bring we've got these big bags and we fill up two bags and the coal bucket. Uh, the coal bucket can sometimes last a couple of days, but the, the wood, um, those baskets need filling every day. Again, rain or shine, no matter what, we need to fill those bags, fill those baskets if we want to keep warm. So I'm just going down to feed the horses. Um, again, you know, it's a daily task. Just put my gloves on. Uh, rain or shine, snow, ice, whatever's going on. Um, you know, we need to look after them, they need caring for. Um, if they're stable, they need mucking out. Um, then, you know, you've got a muck heap and place, you've got to find a place to, to... We're lucky we've got enough land that we just let it rot down and I use it on the veggie plot. Um, but if you haven't got that, you have to pay somebody to remove that muck heap. Um, I'm sorry if it's windy. I've tried to shelter, shelter my mind, but uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure it's super windy. <laughs> So the rain's ease off a little, you know, but there are days where it's literally blowing horizontal um, and bitterly cold. Um, and yeah, it's not much fun on days like that. So let's go over and feed the horses. And while we're there, I'll show you another big winter problem. So here it is. Mud, mud, not so glorious mud. Now we manage our land very carefully. And I'm just going, you can hear it squelching under my boots. And if I just lift the camera up, you can see we've got the whole field is not muddy. 
there's a little bit of poaching down here just because that's when we tend to feed and when we do move the buckets up um, if it gets very muddy and um, but it's just for convenience and um, we can feed them along then and I can just grab the bucket from under the fence um, but this field is being rested this field sorry a little bit quick there is being rested this field gets you can just see there's a puddle there and that actually gets to be a huge lake um, and you can see it's getting a little bit muddy um, but we do manage our land carefully but despite that we have this mud and it's inevitable around water sources and gateways um, where they tend to congregate and this is where they kind of hang out and wait for us and also as I say we come here to feed them it's where we come to fetch them bring them in um, and it's also where they come for their water so it is inevitable that you're going to get some poaching um, this isn't too bad but if you've got too many animals on a smaller space you can literally be knee deep in mud it's something we do try and avoid um, but yeah this will only get worse as winter goes on so while we're here um, the water that can be another problem so you know making sure you've got a plentiful continuous fresh water supply and um, again we're on a borehole and the design of this property is good we've either got automatic waterers um, or we've got stand pipes and hose pipes uh, which is great through the summer months and it means no carrying I have been places where I've had to carry water uh, and it's a nightmare um, but through the winter months obviously things freeze um, and then we are back to carrying from, from the house um, so water through the winter, all summer you, you, you're trying to get water in to make sure they've got enough and all winter you're just trying to stop it freezing. Um, we spend half of the season not having enough grass and the other half of the season having too much and worrying that the horses are going to get fat and laminitic. So um, maintaining our grazing and our pasture, trying to prevent poaching and keeping on top of our water supply are all things that are there every day that we need to be thinking about. But the good days, you know, when the sun is streaming through the clouds and it's beautiful and it's dry, you know, what more can you ask for? So, yes, I'm standing here in the rain and the cold and I'm sure you can hear the wind and I'm talking about all the negatives, but there are so many positives, um, so don't get me wrong. Anyway, the rain is raining onto my glasses. It's also starting to rain onto the camera. Um, so I'm going to go back to the house and get a cup of coffee and I will see you guys soon. So in here is where I keep my horse rugs. Um, I keep boots in these tubs and various bits and bobs in here. Ooh. So brushes and various other odds and sods. And I'm just gonna spin the camera back round. And we have had an issue with mice and rats. And we will always have mice and rats. We live out in the sticks. Um, we've got the chickens, which can attract vermin um, everybody that keeps chickens is aware of that and then of course anywhere where you're, you're storing or using feed regularly um, you're inevitably going to attract mice and rats and then also again I'll just spin the camera around and show you so this is one of the horse's beds and um, which is shavings but again you know it's great for mice and rats to kind of you know scuttle along and make little nests underneath um, horse bedding it's a, it's a place that whoops not out in focus it's a place that will really attract them now I have talked about pest control um, in the polytunnel because I've had mice and rats in there and um, it is a controversial subject so I'm not going to go into the whys and wherefores of, of how um, we control pests here because I know it can open up a massive you know can of worms and it is a controversial subject but again it's something that you need to bear in mind um, you know how would you deal with the problem if if it arose and it, and it inevitably will when you're living out in the sticks so it's just something to bear in mind um, you know there are some people that are completely you know do not want in any way shape or form to to kill or um, you know upset the habitat if you like of, of, of mice and rats but the reality is um, you can soon build up a very big problem so it's something to think about however you feel you want to control or not control you need to be aware that it's something that's going to inevitably happen and it can have pretty big consequences you know from losing all your crops um, when you're trying to, to grow to um, 
you know, I've known people with situations so bad they've actually lost chickens to rats. Um, usually when they're younger, but I've known them pull off an older an older hen. Um, and for me, you know, they eat and chew through rugs and tack and equipment. So, you know, it's it's a real problem alongside the fact that they can carry disease which can spread either to us or to our pets. So I'm not going to hark on about that forever, but it, again, it's while I was over here, it just triggered that thought pattern, something to be aware of. So the kettle's on, I'm back in the house, I'm just warming up a little bit. Um, I'm actually steaming up, so bear with me. So I'm less steamy now. Um, I'm just in the snug. You can see the girls behind me. The kettle is on um, and I just thought I'd round this video up. So thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, if you're new to my channel, please do consider subscribing and hit that bell to get notifications of all my latest videos um, of life here on the farm and all the things that um, sort of go along with that. With regard to this video, it genuinely, as I say, isn't intended to be something negative. Um, the benefits of living here far, far, far outweigh any of the negatives. But I just wanted um, to make um, what I hope would be either a useful video for anybody who's considering um, sort of moving into the country or getting a small holding or, you know, living a more rural lifestyle. Or just interesting for, for people that that kind of are interested in this kind of lifestyle that there are some pitfalls and there are some things that you may not necessarily think about and people don't necessarily freely give up this information um, and just a couple of other things you know living more rurally and, and also you know out in the sticks little things like food shopping for example you know we do have to really think have we got enough in and one of the advantages of growing is you know you can just walk across the polytunnel and, and, and harvest um, but you know we still need um, to buy things from the supermarket you know I can't grow washing powder <laughs> so yeah it's not something you can just nip you know if you live in a town or a city you know you can often just walk and pick up your shopping um, and I'm sometimes quite envious of people that can do that and we're just too far away from any of the supermarkets and, and, and bigger shops so we do try and think you know what do I need? So, for example, today I've got to go and pick up a prescription. So I will think, is there anything else I need? Uh, we try to be quite sensible about how much travel we do. We will try and pick things up to and from work. But again, working night shifts and working long night shifts, it's not always practical. You, you're usually exhausted. and You just need to get home. And also you can't be too late getting home because of, of the animals and so on. Um, but we do try and do some things, you know, like we make sure we've got enough animal feed and um dog food and supplies and so on um, and we might get a monthly amount of that so instead of sort of little weekly amounts or you know some people pick things up daily we just can't do that um, and it's just a case of thinking before you set off so that you're minimizing the amount of fuel you're using and travel um, and time and then on top of that you know we couldn't live here if we didn't drive and we didn't have vehicles and one of the vehicles we have is a four-wheel drive and that's not because we think it looks funky it's because we need it one as a towing vehicle if we need to tow uh, the livestock trailer and also if the weather is really really bad and um, we need the four-wheel drive just to get away from here to get off the property and out um it doesn't happen very often but when it does you know we can be stuck so yeah just little things like that to think about you know if you're going to move rurally where are the nearest shops um is there somewhere you could walk to we have got the village which is only a, a you know a 20 minute um walk it's about half a mile and we have got a post office and village stores there's a florist and a butcher and in no way criticizing them they're all wonderful but of course being rural they are more expensive than than you know either a supermarket or a, or a shop that's sort of more frequented in a town so again that's something to bear in mind that yes we could walk and pick up a few supplies from our local shop but it's going to cost us a little bit more and of course they can't possibly stock you know all of the things that um, necessarily we might need it's it's more basic so that's it really please 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 if you're considering you know moving into the countryside um, do it it's wonderful but just have all these kind of thought patterns in mind do your homework ask questions please feel free to ask me any questions um, I'm you know drop comments below always happy to answer anything about this lifestyle and this way of life and um, this is very much the way we do it it's not necessarily right I have kind of learned over the years you know what doesn't work and what does work for me or for us here um, on this small holding and from experiences of of places where I've I've been before 
so i hope you're all well um i hope you're all hunkering down with this horrendous weather i really appreciate you watching i hope this has been informative and useful um and maybe just interesting take care and i'll see you all again soon